So the little house out there is coming together. And I was thinking, what is one thing that we could add to this picture to make it even nicer? Window boxes, one here and one there. So I have an idea, come with me. <laughs> challenges that I put on myself. First of all, material. Why not 2x4? Cheap and basic 2x4s you can make so much with. Um, that is if you have a bandsaw and you want to do some resawing, which obviously we do because it's fun. Uh, you can turn a 2x4 into 1x4s. However, if you don't have a bandsaw, you don't want to mess around, you can just pick up two 1x4s where you would pick up one 2x4, if that makes sense. Yes, it does. Here is a basic window box liner. Um, nothing fancy. So what exactly are we doing? We are building a box for this box. First of all, I was thinking, okay, let's just make a basic box. Put the pieces on top of each other, you know, frame it in. But, ah, it's not that much fun, is it? I was thinking, okay, how can we make this a little bit more interesting? So, we're going to introduce compound miters. <laughs> Have you ever looked at window boxes? I mean, I think that there are basically two kinds, right? You can either make a box that sits straight or you can make a design where it sits tilted just a little bit. Now, personally, I rather like this slightly tilted look. And when you look at this liner here, it actually comes with an angle already. Now, this is the angle that I'm going for on both sides. This is a 15 degree angle. Now I have a plan for this build if you wanna go and check it out. And as always, all plans are free for patrons at $5 and up. Just gonna put that out there. Now since we're working with two by four material or one by four material, we have a three and a half inch you know, height here. So we need to actually double up. I made some very, very basic prototype. First of all, we have straight or angled. Let's just go with angled because it looks nice and it's kind of cool. Then we have butt joints. As you can see we have an angle, same angle right here. However, not butt joints. Here we have a miter joints. Now this is what we're going to build today. A much nicer version of this. Very first step, resaw some wood. And what does that mean? That means cut this in half. So you get two. Now lucky for me, I already, I've already done that. So to make all this possible, now we're gonna use a miter saw. Now there are two different ways to angle a miter saw. This way, cuts like this. This way, to create miter. Of course we can create a compound miter where we can do both of these. And then we can also, so for our, our window box here, we're gonna need two different cuts for the pieces. So on the, the ends, we're gonna need a bevel and a miter. Um, and on the, the long sides, we're only going to need miter cuts on the corners. So those are straight. The first thing I'm gonna do is just to uh, cut a 45 degree miter uh, off a piece and then measure from there. Okay, so now this is our starting point for our next measurement, the interior of the miter. So here's my other cut. Now when you do miters, I think it's helpful to actually mark out what angle too, so you don't accidentally do the wrong angle. So we want it this way, because we want it to mirror this side. So this one's going this way, so the other one we want to do opposite. If you do miters all the time, this is old news to you, but it's always a little bit confusing if you haven't done it in a while, I think, just to re-familiarize yourself with everything. So now I need to think about, okay, which direction I need to switch my board around, because I want it to go this way. And my, at least my miter saw can only cut um, miters one direction. I can't turn the saw around to the other side. So this is my angle, and this is where I want to actually start the cut. And over on this side, I have some pieces for support. Make sure we have a good... So you can just see the mark right there. So this was a perfect cut. Easy to measure now. Okay, those cuts were simple enough, just miter. Now we come to the compound miter for the sides. So the angle that I'm using is 15 degrees. I'm gonna put it to 15 degrees right there. Okay, now what I need now is the distance here. 
So to make this a little clearer, I have my angle set here. Since I can't turn the saw to the other side, my next cut is going to be the outside of the miter. Now I measured on the inside here, but um, in order to find the outside, I measured out exactly what the difference is between the outside and the inside and I applied that to this cut right here and made my mark. So now I know this is the outside of my miter. Now we just need to recreate this. So we have the pieces for the first layer cut now. I made it a little bit oversized, maybe too much oversized, because I want a little space for corner brackets, but I'm thinking I might have gone a little crazy here. So for our next level now, we will continue this angle like so. So this measurement at the top is our measurement at the bottom for the next one. Now the long pieces for the second level are actually the same as the bottom level, which to me at first seemed weird. I expected them to be longer, but they're the same length. It's just these which uh, are kind of building it up and up and up. Okay, now with our pieces cut up, it's time to go in the shop and first of all, I'm going to paint. Since this is for outdoor use and we're using untreated wood, I want to paint all the pieces before assembly, which also means we're not going to use any glue to connect these pieces together. And for the paint, I'm using just basic exterior paint. I believe this was a satin finish and I just happened to have this on hand. The angled nature of this design makes it just a touch more tricky to assemble than if everything is square. If these were butt jointed, I would just screw right into the other piece. But since these are mitered, I don't want to screw in on a, on a miter corner. That's why I have these blocks here. So I'm going to put a block in each corner like this. And then we're going to nail into the block on each side and then we'll screw into those as well. Here we have some blocks, so it's one fourth of um, a one by four. If you were trying to screw in right off the bat, it's gonna be a little bit trickier to, uh, to connect it um, in the right way, so. Good thing to keep in mind is that this piece just sits straight up and down. This is the short side, whereas the long side is the one that sits angled out. So first step is to connect this in a way where the angle is followed. And while this step of using a nail gun and assembling it this way isn't technically necessary, it's going to make it a lot easier to get a clean result. Because if you try to screw this box together right off the bat, unless you have a really great custom clamp or holder, it's hard to hold all the pieces and the blocks at the same time at the correct angle while pre-drilling and screwing it. Um, it's a lot easier to assemble it at the right angle with a nail gun. So think about it more like the first step in an assembly method. Okay, we have our first level uh, put together. We can now add our second level, continue this method. I often use glue and a nail gun to connect wood projects together. And if you have the glue part, then the nails basically act as a clamp while the glue is drying. So it's a great construction technique for a lot of projects. This time, however, since we pre-painted, we're not doing glue because it wouldn't be a very strong connection. And that's why we're going to reinforce everything with screws once assembled. So again, the nails are acting kind of as a clamp while we're finishing everything up. Very good. Okay, now the other thing to, um, to think about here is um, piece for the bottom. I have a pieces cut at a 15 degree angle. Before when we did the 15 degree, that was on the bevel, right? And we had 45 degree miter as well. For the bottom here, to make sure that it slips in perfectly, I cut the 15 degree on the miter. 
So at this point, it's held together by nails. This is not gonna hold like this, you want to reinforce it. So I'm going to be using some exterior screws. The trick here is to make sure you pre-drill. If you pre-drill through both pieces of wood, not all the way through the second piece of wood, but when you're going through two pieces of wood, in this situation, you wanna make sure you pre-drill through both. Otherwise, it's not gonna go in nearly as easily. You're gonna be fighting it a lot. So this is the screw that I am using. Um, any exterior screw really works as long as it's a good length. This is a perfect. Now at this point, it's not super clean. We're gonna like tighten everything up. Some of the nails didn't go in like perfectly, but this is the opportunity uh, to, to make sure it's all like held together well. Doing little details like measuring out where the screws should be so it, it's all uniform. Uh, it's not necessary, but it just kind of adds a nice little detail. So we have mitered corners here, and I guess the question is always how perfect do you want these miters to be? I mean, it's nice if they're clean, of course, but I don't care about it specifically um, if there is a little bit of a gap here and there. I think you kind of have to expect that. I just want to make sure I don't put these screws in at exactly the same place as the other side so that they'll collide. <laughs> So here we have where the nail didn't go in quite all the way, it left a bit of a gap here. So we want to get this tighter. Two holes, and we're going all the way through. On the wood. It's kind of nice that wood, wood is a little malleable, you know. You can kind of bend it a little bit, you can make it work for you. Got a little uneven here, not much though. Thank you take a block plane. Now let's put in the support pieces for the bottom. I have three pieces and since they are angled, you know, they won't fall through. So I'm just gonna attach them with, I'm gonna put one so they will stay in place, which is kind of neat. So I painted all the pieces once before assembling, then assemble and then paint everything again. So that should be pretty good protection against the elements, right? Rain and sun, plus it's gonna have plants in it. So of course paint is an excellent protector against things like that. I was thinking before like, was it worth it to do the angles and everything like that? And I think it definitely was because it adds like um, a very different look. Um, and I'm looking forward to putting them on the uh, on the wall, you know, on the windows outside. Okay, assembly time. I actually decided that I'm gonna put these window boxes on, on this house. I think, I think that's gonna work out really good, actually. Okay, which is the best side outwards? <laughs> and let's pre-drill some holes. So the way I'm gonna assemble this, I already have trim around my windows, which I put up. I know how it's constructed. So I'm just going to screw right into the trim. Um, if I didn't have trim around the windows, I think what I would do is put it on another piece on my house um, into studs, and then I would attach this to that piece. Go on the walls, so or kind of like this. Okay, in terms of screws, I have slightly longer exterior screws. I 
guys have been just thinking that for the sake of showing this off I wish I hadn't painted them white because it's hard to like get a sense of things on video exactly when you have white on white <laughs> should have you know stained them or okay we'll position it right in the middle now we'll add our level okay very sturdy let's get perfect to do this one here of course okay and I have some plants liners put some plants in the liners I kind of went around the property and scavenged whatever I had in different areas lemon balm there succulent there marigolds there now I mean these add a fair amount of weight with the dirt and of course when you water them and everything so you definitely want to make sure that everything is connected and that uh, you have it screwed into the wall really good okay look at that perfect <laughs> and then of course you know as the season changes you can replace the flowers in the liners put something new in cute right definitely gives it a rather cottagey feeling um, with the uh, the boxes a nice little detail I think so thanks so much for watching guys let me know if you have any questions in the comments below um, and I'll see you guys soon of course this would be nice if you were like had a w kitchen window you put this outside your kitchen window for herbs just open the window and grab some herbs seeing what looks good huh?